Welcome to God's Food for Thought. This week we're going to talk about what habits inhabit you. What habits inhabit you? You know, all creation displays God's divine order and His purpose. This is especially true concerning the bodies that He created for us to live in. He gave us the ability to fully experience life in the creation. Think of it, without any of our sense of sight or hearing, taste, touch, or smell, we would be totally alienated from our surroundings, except for our own thoughts and spiritual perceptions. God designed our brain to connect our spirit with full perceptions of the world we live in. You see, the brain, some people think it's just you. No, it's what connects you to the world that we live in. It connects you to the all of the physical traits. The brain can be utilized by the person, by the spirit, but the brain can also take over and try to control us. It can put demands upon us for pleasure that will manifest as really chemicals like dopamine that will give us a sense of physical happiness and well-being. And God designed us to fully experience happiness in the creation that he gave us, but we can misuse that and that's what's happening so much today as people are turning to drugs and all kinds of things that will create this dopamine. And it's so strong that it will leave the body unable to create its own, to, to be able to really physically experience happiness. And that's where addictions come in. I can't be happy without this substance making me happy because nothing else will do it because my body won't create it anymore. It would take time for that to be restored. God gave us that ability. For example, it's a good feeling that, that you get when you help somebody out and, and you did something that just was wonderful. You'll spiritually experience that, but in our brain, we'll, we'll make that dopamine to... to give us a physical sense of joy and happiness. The people that turn to these really strong inducing of dopamine, for example, uh, it could be sex, it could be any kind of thing, thrill seeking, you know, you gotta go faster and faster and faster to, and it creates that dopamine and, and pretty soon nothing else will make me happy except that I've got to go after that you see they become inhabited by their habit habits can be good I'm glad that I have a habit of driving a car where I don't have to micromanage every time I steer the car I'm kind of on automatic I can by habit drive the car you see, God wants us to develop good habits. And good habits will always embrace the truth of God's word. Where we habitually trust God and acknowledge him. Bad habits will always replace God and replace his word and replace the truth with lies of a counterfeit joy that never fulfills but instead leads to what sin brings, death. An existence without God. Well, I'm not going to talk about the bad habits. I'm going to talk about how to overcome them. And the best defense is a strong offense of developing godly habits instead. Persevering with God strengthens good habits persevering no matter what 
I'm staying with God, no matter what. The more we do that, the stronger we get, and the more habitually we will think that way. You know, a person's habits will actually give a, a true glimpse into their soul and what's at the center of them. The habits we develop and sustain today will set the course of our life today and our eternal future. Simply put, our habits are some of the most important things about us. So let's look into some good habits and how to inhabit good habits. Concerning godly habits, we, we go to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to, and I'll put in the word habitually, to, habitually, give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Worship meaning to submit to him. Now here's the important verse, verse, verse two. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. In other words, picking up their bad habits, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think habitually. How we think all the time is a habit. It says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect changing the way we think first thing we need to do it's the hardest thing but with the grace of god we can do it and that is stop thinking about ourselves all the time how do you do that put your attention on the lord thinking solely about ourselves eliminates god and will change, make our habits always eliminating God. We think of God first. One way is by praying to him. Say, God, I need your help. I'm so sick of me. I'm so sick of thinking about me all the time. Lord, I just want to think about you. And then just think about a scripture or something that you've, that you've read about the Lord. And let your mind go there you see the more we habitually do that the more that will inhabit us Behan begin a habit of including him in all things you plan to do by first of all making a habit of taking some time and a place to sit down and meet with him talk with him whatever five minutes ten minutes make a habit of doing that you think about it, if you just do that 10 minutes a day, in a month you've met with them for 150 minutes. If you make a habit of not doing that, you've met with him not at all. You see, whatever we face, we want to face it with the Lord. Instead of thinking, oh God, what am I going to do? We're thinking, oh Lord, what are we going to do? You know, faith and trust are working together. Walking with God, that's trust. Walking without him, not even thinking about him. There's no trust there. There's no faith there. We need to stop considering our limitations and start looking to God who created everything. The Bible says that our body is the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to think more often that God is with me. Whatever you're going through, you're going through it with God. There's a wonderful song that was written about 20 years ago. And it's a, it's a confession of, of, Lord, I'm sorry. It's a repentance of thinking the wrong way. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And the title of the song is Be Magnified. In other words, God, I want you bigger in my life. God is as big as he's going to be. But how big is he in your life? 
That's how we magnify the Lord, praising him, acknowledging him, trusting in him, having a habit of thinking wherever you go, God is with me. God loves it because he loves your presence and he loves you and he wants to live your life with you. Open your heart to him today and let the song be the words of your cry to God. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.